They are such fundamentally different people and and they do disagree to the very end they're having disagreements but you sense like this incredibly deep respect and love between them uh, and so getting to dig into that and that's always interesting how two people who are very very different really learn to respect what is best in each other during the big final battle the duel of the fates which I know is just the name of the music, but we should still call it the Duel of the Fates because it's pretty badass and it's that momentous. There's that moment where they're all separated from each other by uh, force fields. And, you know, Maul is pacing like a panther and Obi-Wan's like this, he's ready, ready, ready. Qui-Gon drops to his knee and meditates. And that is somebody who is in touch with the force and is as far away from anger and fear as it is possible for you to be. From that alone, I almost sort of drew that like Qui-Gon to the very end was in touch with something about the living force that you kind of get the sense the Jedi Order overall maybe has lost touch with a little bit at that time period. And simultaneously with Obi-Wan, even though he's very different because of Qui-Gon, he, he does have that connection. It's different. All the people that he cares the most die in front of him, except for Anakin, where something even more ha horrible happens to him in front of him. You know, and as far as we have ever seen in canon, he never wavered, which is really a testament. I mean, a lot of people would be driven to um, anger and bitterness and despair by a tenth as much. I would love to write a book or books about the characters in the game Knights of the Old Republic. I love that game a lot, a lot, a lot. Uh, and beyond that, you know, I, I'm just going to put all my dreams on that for right now. We'll see what happens.